While we've grown up, we've nitty bong. I'm Engineer Hoist, and it's been a busy week. Uh, this is what the third stream we've done this week, but uh, just a lot of exciting stuff happening. Uh, usually the streams are about Transformers Earth Wars. This time it's all about the toys because Earthrise Scorponok came in uh, yesterday, and it's time to crack him open right now, live with all of you guys. Welcome to uh, Jer Barbara, Wreck and Rule. It's Breakfast, Silver Bolt, Magnus Prime UK, Oktar, Gunfire. Uh, glad you guys could join us. I started the stream asking, well, who's your favorite uh, Titan? I figured that was appropriate. Uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of you guys said Fortress Maximus. Uh, we had votes for Metroplex and Trypticon. Interesting, though, nobody said Scorponok, even though that's who we're here for. But that's okay. Hey, uh, he doesn't have to be your favorite Titan. And to be fair, doesn't uh, until he came out as a titan class figure he wasn't i don't know if ha how many people really thought of him as a titan but he is he's big and to help us out we got his nemesis here fortress maximus uh don't mind him he's just sitting there playing transformers earth wars he's got his little uh, uh phone there in his hands he's just here to oversee i'm not sure if he knows what's happening uh just yet uh, but we're going to go ahead and crack this old Scorpy open here. Start off, open the tape. And get this open. And which side? Okay, that side. Here comes the fun part. Actually trying to pull this tight inner box out of the outer box because it's, uh, it's always a uh, tight fit. Ah, the smell of a new toy. Gotta love it. Oh, we've got paperwork and whatnot falling off the the bottom there. Oh, not so easy to do <laughs> with my current setup. It's almost out of the box. Okay, and, and in case you're interested, here's Here's the back of the box. It shows off his uh, robot in the two base modes, plus also uh, Zarak in his robot mode. Oh my goodness. There he is. Uh, he's missing a head, but he's in there somewhere. Uh, just, I guess they can make the box a little, little bit shorter by uh, not having it attached. One of the benefits of being a headmaster, I suppose. Okay, so here's, oh, there, yep, as I figured, there's the head right off to the side. In this handy little box, you can kind of see him peeking out there. Oh, more tape, gotta love the tape. That's why you bring the tools when you're gonna do unboxing, you gotta make sure you have scissors or something. Very secure inner box here. <laughs> Willie Hackman, welcome. Good to see you. We're just breaking out Scorponox head here. Boxes, who needs them? I didn't get to go very far. Just ended up in the box, <laughs> in the main box again. All right, so there is the disembodied head of Scorponox, and uh, he's even got his little headmaster head there. It's kind of but working basically the same way as Fortress Maximus. The uh, the main head turns into a bigger robot who is also a headmaster with the little uh, Titan Master size head. And oh, let's see, got a little part here. I think this goes on the back, kind of like a collar for him. Got a little bag of effects parts here. Big bronze rim. <laughs> you want him now? Going to pass? See, that's the that's the thing. If you want something and you're going to pass on them, don't watch review videos of them because then you end up going and getting them. I've I've fallen into that trap myself a few times. Uh, it comes with a little decoder strip if you're one of those people collecting the maps, and it does also come with a nice big map piece. I haven't been keeping track of them or or uh, collecting them or putting them together. So, 
There's his effects parts. It looks like they're basically... They stack together. It, it looks kind of like it's basically just one uh, of the pieces that you get from the uh, Jetfire. What well, one of those little sets. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. All right. So his tail looks like it's uh, separate, packed separately. That's there. Again, probably just for space in the box. So otherwise it'd be a little bit thicker box with a whole lot of empty space if that wasn't off to the side. And now let's just go and... Oh wait, there's one extra little box here. This was a bit of a spacer box, but uh, inside there I can see his some of his weapons. Or all of his weapons. I don't know. His two big guns there. They've got those neatly packed in there. Let's get those carefully snipped off. Okay, so nice big guns. Those are good. what goes on his shoulders, I'm guessing. And now I think all that's left, he does have a little piece thing down at the bottom. Oh no, he's got something else down here. Another little spacer thing at his feet. Got something in here too. I think this is probably his shield. That little shield thing that goes on his arm. Yes, indeed. This is pretty cool. It's uh, simultaneously more and less functional than the original G1. The equivalent part. Because uh, in the original one, these little claws didn't do anything. But it also separated and had two pieces. So a so little bit of extra, but a little bit less too. We'll take a look at that later. And I think that's all that's left, except all that's out of there, except for the big guy himself. So let me just cut all of these... They're actually using ropes. Remember they used to use ropes for all of these, all of the toys, but uh, they kind of went away from that, went to the plastic tire racks. So they're using ropes for the big guys still. Pretty solid ropes, and they're double wrapped too. They definitely don't want him to be uh, moving. It's breakfast asking, does paint shipping on figures annoy you guys? Uh, depends. Um, I, I think I'm uh, once again in agreement with uh, Big Bronze Rim. It's uh, if it's noticeable and extensive, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. But uh, it can be annoying. But uh, sometimes the paint chips in an area where you don't really see it. And then, you know, if you don't sit out of sight, out of mind, you know? I think that's all, but I usually find more if I didn't get it. Okay, let's see. I think that's it. If it's not... Okay, he's not coming out easily, so I think something's just wedged in there. Oh, yeah, that was it. Oh my goodness. I think he's got a couple of extra little things to snip down here. There he is, big guy. Let me get these other little plastic pieces off. I think they're just holding on some extra parts on his around his uh, ankles there. So there we go. There is the headless Titan, headless Scorpok. Nice little ratchet there on his uh, lower arm. Does bend. And let me see how we put the piece on here. Okay, so the tail is kind of folded up here. You just kind of unfold it here. 
And it lo looks like it's just going to kind of snap onto that little piece there. So let me go ahead and do that. How is that going to go? Okay, so now he's got a nice little tail. <laughs> and it's going to probably tab in up here somewhere. Somehow. Unless maybe I have it backwards. possible I have it backwards. I think I might have it backwards. <laughs> Do you agree that toys are playable by anyone, not just kids? Uh, I hope so. I'm, f I'm far from a kid and I'm still playing with toys. Oh yeah, the uh, season four of Transformers. Yeah, it is te technically uh, uh, considered a season, that uh, rebirth season. It's only a handful of episodes, but uh, yeah, that's all we saw him in the uh, G1 cartoon. Okay, let me just make sure that this is kind of where he's uh, expected to go. I don't know. Maybe I should pull out the instructions for this part. It's not real obvious how that's supposed to connect. Okay, so this actually, they're saying that flips all the way up like that. And then this is hanging off this way. Okay. So I did have it backwards. So it goes on to where when it's hanging, it's like that. And then this whole thing folds up like that and then it kind of just tab tabs all together nice and neat up on his back there and uh, let's see pretty sure he has some toes so yeah the toes just kind of are Fold it up in there, you just kind of pull those down like that. The uh, guns. Just tab in up on his shoulder here. Angle them however you choose. Generally, they're kind of off at an angle like that, and I like that look. So that's what I'm going with. This part here, there's just a couple little holes here on this little orange part at the top. It, and it, the whole orange part does rotate, so this little collar rotates with the head. And you can kind of see that's obviously where his head fits in. And there's a nice little hole there, so if you want to keep the little headmaster on the big head, just kind of fit that in there. And boom, there you go. And if it's anything like Fort Max over there, it, it'll actually connect in there even with the little guy on there. Because that's how I like to display my Fort Max. He's got his head on, but the little, the little, uh, the little headmaster, which I, th I think it's Spike on Fort Max, is actually sitting there up on his shoulder, out of camera shot. But and then this, they, sh this part here, they show you can attach to his back here for storage. Or as he's usually portrayed, or at least in G1, it does attach to his claw here somehow. Looks like he's got another couple of holes right here that these little pegs can go in. Same ones that get peg on his back. So now he's got a nice little claw shield, even though it's not much of a shield there. And this back part kind of came undone. I bumped it the wrong way. Okay, so he's got a nice little shield there. And otherwise, looks mighty impressive. 
mighty, mighty impressive. Let's stand him back over here next to Fort Max. Roughly the same height. I'll, I'll get a picture or something later. But uh, looks like he's a little smaller than Fort Max, which I think is appropriate. Uh, but he is at least closer in size. Um, well, not much room here with the mic microphone. We'll see what we can do. Oops. He's stepping on my keyboard and everything. Typical Decepticon. Messing everything up. <laughs> I really need more space to be able to do this. But we're getting through. We're getting through. Okay, so there we go. Unless I'm doing something wrong, he seems to be wanting to lean a little towards the back. But uh, I'll just hold, hold on to him for now. But uh, yeah, there you go. There is Gorpanok. Uh, looking really nice. Yeah, I can't wait to actually get in there and, and do more with him. Let's see, Oktar says he has a little Devastator look to him. Yeah, he's definitely definitely got the uh, the same kind of color scheme going on there. Except he's got a... Uh, Devastator was mostly green, whereas uh, with a little bits of purple, he's a little bit more opposite. He's mostly purple with little bits of green. Uh, plus, he's also got some orange thrown in there for good measure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with this guy. Really happy. Uh... Oh, his claws, uh, they're actually individually articulated fingers on his claws. Now, I kind of expected the, uh, the thumb to be articulated, but uh, the, the two fingers are actually there. So he can actually point at you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> so really cool, really cool. Let's see, can, can he hold a... I guess this would be a Voyager class figure, so... Yeah, and he's he's holding holding uh, Ramjet here is pretty good, uh, maybe not too much. The uh, ratchets aren't as strong as you might think, but uh, he's holding them there pretty pretty decently. Not bad, not bad. I like it. No, oh, definitely happy to get this guy. I mean, I, I've gotten all the other Titans too. I mean, I got Metroplex when it first came out. I got Fort Max, Triptychons over there. Uh, Omega Supreme, Devastator, Predaking, but they're both Titan class combiners. Uh, kind of didn't want to break the, break the trend with uh, old Scorpy here. And uh, I actually still have my G1 Scorponok from back in the day, so uh, of course I've got to get the updated version of him too. Uh, very happy with this guy. Uh, uh, very happy to uh, finally get him out. It arrived and out of the box. I'm glad uh, you guys could be here to, to share it with me. And, um, yeah, good, good stuff, man. But, uh, I, I think that's going to be it because, uh, the, the point of this was kind of just the unboxing and uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but my neighbors are shooting off fireworks like it's 4th of July or something, but here it's just like 5th of September, but Hey, whatever, <laughs> at least they're having fun. Right? So, okay. <laughs> Any new figures I'm getting but hasn't arrived yet? We're, we're talking about a new figure here, and you're already talking about more? <laughs> but yes, actually. Uh, who is it? I think uh, one of our viewers, Devastator, keeps asking if I ever got that, get that uh, Ocular Max Bruticus to, com to finish that uh, combiner. That is in stock, but uh, I haven't shipped it out yet. Uh, I, it came in about the day after I shipped this guy. That one came in stock, and I'm like, ah, figures. But I thought it was good because it lets me take this shipment to enjoy this guy. And I'll, I'll get that brawl and complete that Bruticus next shipment. But uh, for now, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, enjoying Scorponok here and then uh, moving on uh, from there. But... Uh, you know, for Fortress Maximus <laughs> and Scorponok, I think we're going to go ahead and end the stream and um, and move on and uh, pick back up with our regularly scheduled streams uh, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern where we talk about Transformers Earth Wars news. I'm Engineer Hoist. Keep all of my friends, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>